thought I'd give uh, Iridium 2 a go today with the old uh, Mega Drive ripoff USB joypad. Yes, the one that arrived broken, not the one that I fixed, which is actually a bit nicer. Still, now the problem with this game is it's kind of a divisive game. You either prefer this or you prefer the C64 version. Now, a few people love both equally. You're going to prefer one to the other. Now I have to say, when I had my Amiga, I didn't actually rate this game that highly. Now I think part of that is because, well, it's quite a simple game um, for the Amiga hardware to do. I mean, uh, a demo coder, a really good demo coder, maybe even the best demo coder, on the Atari ST could probably do something very similar to this. Yeah, the graphics are not that, you know, they don't give you a, an arcade quality sort of feel. They do have that kind of uh, Amiga-ness about them. You know, where people basically use the 32 color palette to make up like, I don't know, six shades of like six different colours. Yeah, I know that's 36 colours. Don't forget the copper, man. So, let's go. Now, there's a few differences with this. The first, the first two levels, I don't think there's anything you can actually hit um, when you're flying over it, which was a problem on the C64 version. Uh, and uh, another thing is, when I did get this game uh, as a crap copy, um, I don't think it had any trainers at all actually, which put me right off. Uh, that, that's the thing. Uh, some games, you know, they're great when you set a few options on the trainer, but without them, uh, you're never really going to, you know, play them every year of your life. Yeah, like Lotus too. <clears throat> and they just need the help of the trainers to, uh, you know, just get the maximum out of the game. I wouldn't call it cheating. So, you know, it's not obvious what you've got to hit, what you can even hit, actually. Now I've got in-game keys switched on. Uh, I don't know if I've got anything else there. Uh, that's a problem actually. To uh, set the uh, better weapons, I've got to press the function keys, which are crap. Okay, so we're going on with the, uh, the old doodars there, mate. Because there's no bullet showing up. Yeah, I thought I'd put this into uh, NTSC mode, so that could be a slight issue there. Uh, you can't see your bullets if you're running in NTSC mode. So now uh, you're going to need a different track for that. I can't remember the goddamn key to get the uh, portal up. And that's a bit of a shame because as you can see the usual suspects are not working so. Oh man, I didn't think this would be a problem. It won't actually finish like this. That 
pretty disastrous review actually, because we're stuck on the one now. Yeah? <laughs> <coughs> Don't think there's a level skip cheat. So we're going to have to press every key on the damn keyboard until the stupid portal comes up. Now this is one thing <coughs> I really didn't like about Iridium 2, this section. It's always the same sequence, no matter what Dreadnought it is, it's going to be the same damn sequence. Ah, Jesus Christ. Right, worked it out, you've got to hold down the fire button. <coughs> right, so uh, I do have invincibility on. Yeah, if it did that while it scrolled, that's fine, but it doesn't. And uh, security check, oh, this was annoying as well. Just bugger off, mate. And you still have to get to the fucking end. And it's very fucking awkward. Um, yeah, so I didn't like that. The fact that it doesn't scroll the dreadnought as it's being destroyed. And uh, the C64 doesn't even have hardware scrolling. So I picked up bombs. Oh, damn it. I thought I was invincible. Damn you, man. I stuck with them problems now. Um, yeah, so they've changed a few things on this. Um, graphics are kind of a bit much of a muchness, as I like to say in the tree. <laughs> yeah, I did actually do some pixel art for a games company back in 1989, and uh, they proceeded to go uh, bankrupt before any games were ever released. So I don't know if they ever even used my work. That's a whole reply to me. I'm sure I had unlimited energy. Oh yeah, it's unlimited energy in the core. There's no invincibility to it, so... Uh, the land now business... Uh, those green triangle should be flashing like the real airstrip. I we got to get that uh, I can't get out of this business. I hate games with gravity, that's another reason why I don't like this section. You can't escape. There's no escape for this rubbish sector. Yeah, perhaps I shouldn't have said it on NTSC mode. But I wanted to get the best out of the game. <clears throat> Obviously, if you play it on the Amiga 1200, you can switch to 60 yards mode anyway. Yeah, it's getting me out of it. So, yeah, it's just, um, it's just a rubbish boss sequence that's the same every time. Oh yeah, the C64 hardware scrolling business. Yeah, the only thing the C64 can actually do in hardware is move the screen horizontally 8 pixels or vertically 8 pixels, just shift it. And then if you want to move a whole character square, you have to redraw the entire screen uh, with a 1 megahertz 6510 CPU. So yeah. And uh, the maximum scrolling speed on this, I don't think it is actually as fast as you really. It might be, but it just doesn't feel it. Um, so, you actually have to scroll up and down. The speech is nice. That's a positive, there you go. Your shit looks rubbish, but the warping sequence is nice, I like that. <coughs> you can start hitting things now as well. Play <coughs> 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 
So uh, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, I, I didn't really think that much of it back then. Uh, I just expected more technically from Andrew Brayton. I thought, well, if he can do that on a C64, and Iridium was like, you know, his only second uh, commercial game, I think, I think Ripley's Day Out was the first one. Which is actually a nice game. Not technically amazing or anything. Uh, or pure arcade like you really do. Yeah, I can't really take my hands off the joypad so I can actually change the weapon. Crap. Time for a new weapon, so. I mean, with this trainer, you can actually enjoy it more. I mean, I actually like the body. They look great. Uh, it leaves you kind of defenseless, which is where the uh, shields come in. There is a shield pick up as well. Uh, works the same sort of way as uh, the shields on Bulk Adventure. They kind of surround you. It doesn't have that sort of uh, Konami arcade machine kind of quality of picture art, I think. Sand is all right. I mean, the music is, is neither bad nor good. The graphics are neither shit nor spectacular. Um, without a trainer, it's pretty damn hard. Yes, I'm pressing space for that now. Um, the land now section is very indistinct as well. Yeah, I think we need to find the... Um, I didn't want to do that. One of these should give you a shield. There we go. Right, so now at least you can find the damn uh, land side. Can you see it? Is it this one? No, because they're not pretty. Ah, crap, where the hell is the landing zone? See, you shouldn't have problems like this on this kind of game. And now I've lost the damn power up. Usually they have green LEDs. See what I mean? Can you see the landing site? It's not obvious at all, is it? There are some yellow uh, LEDs. I'm trying to find the landing site. Shut up. Ah, Jesus Christ, you have to go really slow. You know, it's a sequel for the sake of it. And uh, having to do this bit infuriated me because I don't like gravity. I think it's shit graphically. Um, and you can lose lives, actually. On this section, you're basically losing life. On the C64, the most you could lose is bonus points. So, you know, there's a lot of things I don't like about the game. Could be worse. And I think at the time, obviously, I didn't know how badly programmed, badly programmed most of me would be. So in hindsight, it's not as bad as I thought. I mean, today you can really, like, you get the most out of it with uh, trainers. You know, not everyone had access to uh, pirating games in the early days. You know when this game came out, I think, in 1989, 1990? Yeah, I mean, I'm just... I need an extra weapon now, but 
Excuse me. Now I've lost the young weapon. It's really annoying. Yeah, he needed it. You see, that's the thing on the trainers, there's no involvement. So. And. Nah, I think that says it all destroyed, mate. <clears throat> and these are all the reasons why I didn't buy the Bob Down in the first place. It's basically middle of the road, all the way. Middle of the road, all the way. Bloody Nesquik uh, banana milkshake made at home. It's no uh, McDonald's banana milkshake, I tell you that means nothing. But then again, it's better than having uh, lukewarm cat instead. 